So just as briefly as I can be, I just want to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to go into each one and how they're manifested and what they're for. I think we have a pretty good understanding if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, what the early church was experiencing in terms of gifts. And that's a great place to start because right there you see so much. But in the great document, Christi Fidelis Lacey, this is what is written. It says, the Holy Spirit, while bestowing diverse ministries and church communion, enriches it still further with the particular gifts or promptings of grace called charisms. They can take a great variety of forms, both as manifestations of absolute freedom of the Spirit, who abundantly supplies them, and as a response to the very varied needs of church, of the church in history. This, the description and classification given these gifts in the New Testament are an indication of their rich variety. And it goes on to, to, to quote 1 Corinthians 12 here where it says, To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the ability to distinguish between Spirits to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. This paragraph is concluded with these words, whether they are exceptional or great, and great or simple and ordinary, the charisms are graces of the Holy Spirit that have directly or indirectly a usefulness for the ecclesial community, ordered as they are to the building up of the church, to the well-being of humanity, and to the needs of the world. Even in our own time, there is no lack of a fruitful manifestation of various charisms among the faithful women and men. And when we read this, you know, I think what we see is that the Holy Spirit is the giver of gifts. The greatest gift, as we know, that he gives us is himself. His presence in our lives that awakens faith. But right now, there is such a lack of faith in the world that I believe this is a time when the Holy Spirit is stepping up and saying, I am going to give you the manifestations that you need to break the toughest nuts in your parish. Those hearts, hearts that become so hardened against me, those eyes that have become so blinded and distracted by the world are going to be brought back to focus on Jesus Christ through the words and works that, that you will do as priests and deacons in the church today. I think it's absolutely essential because right now there is such a great need for faith. We see absolutely a complete lack of faith when only 30% of our brothers and sisters who call themselves Catholic believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ. We see a great lack of faith where in most dioceses, church attendance has dropped below 15%, maybe closer to 10%. People are not drawn to the Lord. They become so full of the world and its goods and it offers an endless supply of distraction. You can rent tons of video services, get on tons of social media, keep yourself distracted from anything meaningful or purposeful in your life, and just kind of like become this consuming vegetable that's not tuned into who God is. People are not tuned into one another. Heck, they're not even aware of who they are anymore. People have, are walking through this life not knowing who they are without purpose and direction. And, and these charisms are to awaken faith to direct people's attention back to the Lord. In the, the, in, the, in, the, in the letter on the laity in Vatican II, it says, the reception of these charisms, even the most ordinary ones, arises for each of the faithful, the right and duty to exercise them in the church and in the world. So as a church, every baptized Catholic has the right to receive and use the gifts of the Holy Spirit and a duty, a responsibility, because as St. Paul alludes, they're not given to you for your benefit. They're given to you for the benefit of others. And I think a lot of times our hesitation with going after spiritual gifts is that we've come across people who wielded them very poorly, right? It's all about me. Watch me demonstrate how much God loves me or how strong I am in the Spirit. And you see people, you know, like sometimes become very spiritually proud when they have charisms. And that's a great danger. Because we lose the sense that we are being God's instruments and start claiming it for ourselves, where God would say, the more docile and humble we are, the more he's going to use us to do these great things. But unfortunately, our humanity gets mixed in there very quickly, even in, in the midst of spiritual renewal. But the Holy Spirit wants to come 
because we have a right and duty to take the gifts that we've been given, and most of them have already been given to you in your baptism. They have to be discovered, discerned, and awakened. Like everybody who comes through your parish door has a charism that's going to make your parish a better place. And unfortunately, we're not even helping people discover for themselves not just what they could receive by coming to the church, but what they could bring, the impact if they just discovered the fact that inside their soul is a treasure chest of gifts that could help minister and bring the love of Jesus to other people and how desperately God wants to grab a hold of them and awaken that in them and use them for his glory and use them and, and give them the joy of knowing that they're walking with the Lord in power, that there's so much more for them. And there's so much more for each one of us here. When the Holy Spirit comes to us, he is inseparable from the charisms. I often, I often tell people, like, don't ever come to the Holy Spirit with a, a checklist of things you want and checklist of things you don't want from him. When we say the Holy Spirit, and we say this in our creed, this is a fundamental belief. The Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life, which means we don't come to the Holy Spirit with terms. We don't negotiate. We submit. to everything that he would want to do. Because anything that he's going to do is going to give us that full life that Christ desires for us. The Holy Spirit will never take anything away from us except those things, those sins that keep us from experiencing the full life. The Holy Spirit will never ask us to receive something or to do anything that's going to be beyond our capacity. No, it's, it's, they're definitely beyond our ability. But with the Holy Spirit, they're never beyond our capacity. This is why they call it a step of faith. If we could do it without his help, if we could do the work of God without completely having to surrender to him first, then it wouldn't be the work of God. It would just be our flesh. And St. Paul is clear, crystal clear, the works of the flesh amount to nothing. The Spirit is life. And this is why as we come to the Lord this afternoon, we just want to say, okay, God, whatever you want. And one of the things I just want to talk about, because I had a great conversation uh, yesterday about this, is just um, one gift that is probably 99.9% .9 of the time just an edification for you, for your own personal spirituality. And that is the gift of speaking in tongues, to praying in the Spirit. And it's probably the one that people just like least understand and is probably uh, not really sought after because there are more exciting gifts out there. Now, my experience with speaking in tongues started when I was in high school, not experiencing it directly, but when my dad was a funeral director. My brother's a funeral director. My grandfather and my great-grandfather were all funeral directors. And so growing up, I worked at funerals with my dad. I'd put on my suit. I would help set everything up. I would watch my dad serve and minister to people in, their, in some of their most painful moments with just this love and grace. He really lived his vocation as a work of mercy. He was the first person to teach me about ministry. And I got to know every minister in town because of it, personally, because we'd be standing around before and after and they'd have receptions in the basement, you know, those, those potlucks that they always have where... You know, I, I, do they still do the potlucks after funerals, have, you know, receptions? I hope so. That was such a beautiful... We did one for my dad uh, a couple weeks ago after his funeral. We had it done at our Elks Club. It was awesome. Anyway, um, so we, we, I, the, the, the Pentecostal Assemblies of God minister, he would tell me, speaking in tongues is the sign that you've been saved, that you're filled with the life of God, is when you speak in tongues. I'd go to the Baptist church, and the Baptist minister would say, speaking in the tongues ended with, a, with the last apostle's death. And anyone who manifests that gift is of the devil. It's the devil's work in you. So in both of these men, with just the most sincere, sincere look on their face, says, we believe this because this is what the Holy Spirit has led to our church to believe. And I used to be so confused, like, how could... So many, many people who are so sincere be so wrong and on so opposite ends of who they think the Holy Spirit is and how he wants to manifest himself in their lives. And I think it's because both of them were formed with a preconceived idea of what the Holy Spirit is. This is what they were raised to believe. But what we have been raised to believe 
in our church is that we come to the Lord. He's the Lord and giver of life. He wants to bless the church with charisms. We need to receive them. It's all great. And St. Paul, when, when it comes to the gift of, 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 of praying in tongues, said some pretty impressive things. And most of it is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So this is all for you to review. He says, those who speak in tongues speak to God, not to other people, because nobody understands them. They are speaking in the spirit and the meaning is hidden. All right, so it's a speaking out of words, a heavenly language, angelic tongues, however you want to describe it, but it's a language that's hidden from others from understanding. He goes on to say, I should like you all to speak in tongues. He goes on to say, what then? I, I shall pray with the Spirit, but I shall pray with the mind as well. I shall sing praises with the Spirit, and I shall sing, sing praises with the mind as well. So he, for him, it wasn't, you got to pray one way or the other. Mental praise, proclaiming God's goodness out of a cont contemplative thought of God, like, God, you are so amazing, your creation is wonderful. Praising him with your voice, with words, is a beautiful gift, but also the praying in the Spirit and offering up this angelic praise this, this is also a good. He goes on to say, do not suppress the gift of speaking in tongues because he who speaks in tongues builds himself up. This is all included in it. But, but then we still are confused. What is it? Well, I would say we need to, a couple of things. Number one, it's something that's not forced upon anyone. This is the way I love about God, is that God gives gifts, and we receive the gifts that we are able to receive. Like, I know people who have said, I've never spoken in tongues. I've asked the God, God 25 times for the gift of tongues, and I've never received it. What's wrong with me? I would say there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with God. It could be, so, it could be simply God is... Asking you before he gives you this gift to take one more step of faith. They, that, to believe in his goodness, even if we don't get what we want. Because what is the greatest gift that you could have? What is the greater gift that you could have? Faith that keeps you persevering in prayer and asking God for the good things? Or the gift of tongues? For me, it seems like there's three things that remain, and tongues isn't one of them. But the gift of faith to believe that I'm going to keep going to God and asking Him, trusting in His timing, trusting in His goodness, is a greater gift than speaking in tongues. It is one of the three that lasts. So it's not forced upon any, but it really is a collaboration of your will with the Spirit's will. And I was talking with Chris about this at dinner extensively. And for me, what God has kind of, like, I've, I've wrestled with this. Because one of the things I've never done is I've never been prayed over and rested in the Spirit. And I've, I've prayed over people and they've rested in the Spirit. I've seen other people pray over people and they've rested. I've never rested in the Spirit. And I don't feel like I'm defective or God doesn't have his best for me. I think if I needed to rest in the Spirit, I would have rested in the Spirit. And for some of you, right now, you don't need the gift of tongues. There's other things that God might want to work on. So if you ask for it and you don't receive it, don't, don't be upset. But when you ask for it, what, is it, what, what's it, what you're doing is saying, okay, God, I need to submit every part of my life to your work. Let it start with my voice. How powerful is our voice? You know, we, you know St. James said the tongue has such great power. So if we can submit our tongues our voice to the Spirit to the point where we, we're yielding in prayer and letting Him pray through us. You know, because St. James says, those who can control their tongues can control just about any part of themselves. That's how hard it is. I would also say those who can get to that yielding also are going to be able to yield even greater things to God in their lives. Second, it's not imposed. It's, in, it's like with God with everything. It's invitation. Come receive what God has. It is not an infallible sign of being filled with the Spirit. Love is the infallible sign of being filled with the Spirit. All right? Let's just put it out there. Because even St. Paul says, you can speak in all the tongues you want, but if you don't have love, you're just a clanging symbol. You're noise. Finally, it's our experience. And the main purpose of tongues is to edify. What I have found for me is when I'm at a conference like this and there's praise and worship, yes, I find myself praising in tongues. But 99.9% .9 of the time when I'm using this gift, it's when I'm entering into mental prayer and hitting a door. 
or a wall. And I had this very vivid image in prayer um, a few years ago of me and on the outdoor outside of this cathedral banging on the front door saying, God, open up. I want to come in. I know you're in there. Just open up. And, and, and it was like I was trying so hard to get through this door. And it wasn't opening to me. And as I stood there, I noticed as I looked off to the side, around the corner came this bright light. And it had no real form. So I can't say it was an angel. I can't say it was the Holy Spirit. It could have been the Blessed Mother for all I know. But as I saw this vision, this bright light beckoned me to come and follow it around the corner. And I did. It went about halfway down the side of this building, this great massive cathedral, and stopped. And I, and I slowly approached and looked, and what the, what the light was illuminating was this tiny little door, a hidden tiny little door. And I reached down, and I opened it up, and I walked through it, and I was in the presence of God. And what the, what the Lord said to me is, I will lead you in prayer if you're docile to my spirit. And I have found that using that gift of tongues is how I put myself in that place of docility, like every time I pray now, I just stop before I start with my list or, you know, even though I know there's things I want to pray about, even if I have disciplines, I know, like I pray the litany of trust and humility. I stop and I say, Lord, without your spirit leading me, this is not going to go where it needs to go. You're the Lord and giver of life. Breathe life into my prayer. Lead me where I want to go. And so I want to pray with you to receive the gift of tongues for your own edification so that you will have a prayer language. You know, like that, that when we don't know how to pray, St. Paul says the Spirit intercedes. Sometimes that's what it is. I, as I don't know how to pray, but we can say, come Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will just start speaking. And, and it's okay at first if it feels weird, right? If it feels like um, you're just babbling, like baby talk. You know, one of the things that you do not do when you receive a spiritual gift is walk into maturity with it. God needs to mature all these gifts in us, and he does that over time. But we need to take the step of faith to ask, because if we ask, we shall receive. And we're going to say, come Holy Spirit right now, and I'm just going to lead you in a prayer of surrender to receive that gift. Then we're going to pray for some other gifts. And then we're going to, you know, I, I, I don't know where the Spirit's going to lead this. All I know is this is what God has asked me to do. Uh, I hope you're with me. Amen. Let's just go and pray and let the Spirit lead us and give us what He wants this afternoon. Amen? Amen. And you can stand, you can kneel, you can sit, whatever posture helps you to pray right now, that's the posture I want you to be in. Whatever is a yielding posture for you, if it's standing with your hands in the air, great. That receptivity, let your body show up by maybe sitting there with your hands open in front of you and just saying, God, have your way. God, have your way. I surrender. Give me whatever gifts you want to give me. But just receive. Just receive. Amen? Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord God. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My own experience is the first time, I, and maybe even the third time, People prayed over me to receive this gift. I, I did not receive it. But it, it was at a time when I was unexpectedly in prayer with the Lord it, it, by myself that the gift began to manifest itself. And as I, because I was in a place where I was truly intimate and yielding with the Lord. Do not believe you have to come to Francisca University and be prayed over in Christ the King Chapel in order to receive gifts from God, okay? God will meet you where you are in his timing. I wanted to start with this gift, though, because it edifies our prayer. It strengthens our ability to pray. Some of you already have strong prayer lives. This might add a new dimension to it. For those who might be struggling in prayer, this could be a great aid. But it's simply, you know, also not the only way to strengthen our prayer. So I, I, I want to be clear. This is not about acquiring exactly what we want in the moment, or even the feeling that might accompany God moving. This is an act of will, an act of surrender, and a step of faith to say, Lord, if you want to give me this gift, I'm open to it. But trusting that whatever happens on the other side of that surrender is for our good 
and for God's reasons. And oftentimes when God doesn't show up and doesn't give us that gift in the moment, we want to assign our own reasons to it. Well, God doesn't love me. I'm not special enough to receive that gift. All the lies we tell ourselves over and over again, we've been telling all our lives, we start to apply our own reasoning for, to, to, for God's actions. Don't let Satan take you there because that, your mind is like a bad neighborhood. You don't want to go in there alone. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit guide you, okay? I want to talk really briefly about the next thing I want us to pray for, which is the gift of prophecy. Because if tongues is a gift of prayer that is for our edification, there is no greater gift that God could give us for the edification of others than prophetic words. How does this work? God speaks his truth through us. Prophecy is not trying to unlock the profound heart of God and make it easy to understand for others. What it is is simply speaking in the power of the Spirit God's Word to us in the moment. Which means as we proclaim, as we walk, it means that we have to walk in docility and surrender. In my own life, I was getting on a plane to go from Colorado to North Carolina. When I sat down, I'm the kind of guy that when I get on the plane, it's headphones in, eyes down, getting my little, you know, cone of silence from, you know, like, get smart, you know, just like, I'm not going to be bothered by anybody. Thank you. You got my, yeah. But you get in your cone of silence, you just kind of hunker down. And uh, on this particular flight, as soon as I sat down, God started poking me in the ribs, spiritual ribs, as it were, saying, go talk to the guy across the aisle. And I was near the back of the plane, so there was a lot of open seats, but he was a row ahead of me on the opposite side, sitting next to the window. There's probably nothing more awkward than somebody sitting down in your aisle with you, in that same row with you, who's not supposed to be there. You're like, oh, I got my own row. Isn't that the best feeling when you're, in, like you're sitting in, the, in a row and they close the main door of the plane and that seat is still empty? <laughs> I know it's not always the best attitude of heart, but sometimes it's just a relief. You know, you just want some downtime on the plane. And that's what I wanted, but that's not what God wanted. I got the nudge. I went over, I sat down, and I just said, this is weird. I just got to be completely honest. I was praying as I was getting on the plane, and the Lord wants me to talk to you. My name is John. How are you doing? He goes, well, my name is Bill, and I'm not doing well at all. He said, and, I, and, and the long of short of it, his sister had been murdered three days earlier, and he was flying back to North Carolina to bury her. And he was a wreck. He, she had a, a boyfriend that was extremely abusive. He beat her up and then dumped a whole bucket of boiling water on her, and she was scalded to death. And as he thought about her, you know, he described his nightmares of her writhing on the floor in pain and how he, he wanted wish he could be there and he couldn't. He, he was like feeling guilty and feeling anger and just all this unbridled emotion and pain. And it was so raw and so real. And all I could do is say, let's pray. And, you know, I mean, I just started praying with him. That peace, I started proclaiming, you're a love by God. Your sister is loved by God, and his grace is there. His grace is here for you. Just receive it. Receive God's love for you right now. And it wasn't about, you need to let go. You need to, you know, it wasn't about, you need to forgive this guy. It was like, in that moment, just receive what God wants to give you because you are loved, and that's all I had. And I just prayed that the Holy Spirit would make it real, and the Holy Spirit showed up in power at 28,000 feet and started massaging this guy's broken heart and cradling it and loving it. And that was the image I got. I said, God is holding your heart. And he's, he's very intimately speaking his love into your heart. Just receive it. By the time we were done praying, he was just in a different place emotionally. He had peace and he had tears and he had gratitude. Whatever God did in his heart, me being there to pray with him and to speak God's love into his heart. Jesus used the prophetic words all the time. The woman at the well. 
He spoke prophetically, you know, you, you've had five husbands and the man you're living with currently isn't. And it wasn't condemnation. It was freedom for her. I was at a, a healing retreat and I've been blessed to learn about a lot of healing and prayer through wonderful people like Dr. Bob Schutz. And, 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 and in this retreat that I was on with him, uh, as soon as this man sat down for prayer, the Lord had put it out of a heart that he was had a, a pornography addiction and that God was going to free him. And as we began to pray, I said, what would you like prayer for? Knowing full well that eventually the Lord was going to take us there. And he was having a hard time expressing it. I said, say no more. The Lord wants to do nothing more than to free you, to free you from this addiction. He, and he's like, what? How, what do you, like, the Lord is here. He's going to guide this prayer. He's already, he's already starting to lead me to pray for you. Will you receive this word? And he's like, yes, I want the freedom. You know, like, he was seen by God, known by God, and loved by God in that moment because God spoke through me to him. It was like, I wasn't, I wasn't alone. God has sent somebody in my life, has prepared this moment to bring freedom to my life, and, and, it, and it energized his faith, and I believe it was the key that unlocked his heart to bring healing into it and the freedom that God wanted. Our words can restore, restore people's dignity. It can inspire people to radical discipleship. It can bring correction to people's lives. It can provide direction and enhance people's vision for their lives. Prophetic words can provide an agenda for prayer like I just shared about. Prophecy and, and words of knowledge can open up the scriptures and bring anointing to your teaching and to your preaching. Because God will be speaking to you a word that's directly from him. I can still remember very young in my, in my uh, walk with the Lord, I was, I was in a group and we were praying and people were getting prophetic words. And I wanted this word. I wanted a word from God. I said, God, I speak a powerful word through my, through my lips, Lord. Let me bless these people with your, whatever you want to say. And nothing was coming to me. And one guy, two, day, two uh, people away from me in the circle just said, I, you guys, I get this sense, this overwhelming sense that God just wants to say, I love you. Now, I had heard people preach God loves me many, many times. But in that moment, it wasn't spoken as a thought. It was spoken in a response to the gift that was being placed in that person's heart. And it hit me. It was like, it was like once again, it, it, it caused a realignment of, of what I was ser searching for back in that moment to seeking God's love for me. Because that's what God wanted to do. And it was just a powerful encounter. And it was a simple prophetic word. St. Paul says, we should earnestly desire, desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Because when we prophesy, it is definitely for the benefit of another. People need to hear God speak into their lives, and they will do that as we accept and pass on prophetic words. So here's what we're going to do. <laughs> let's get awkward. Um, let's pray for this gift. And here's how I'd like you to do it. I'd like you to pair off with one other person and pray for this gift. And how it works is like, God, I want to, uh, would you please give me a prophetic word for the other person? And how do you do that? Okay, you just, as an act of will, Lord, I want to receive this gift. Because I believe this is a gift that everyone has. I believe that everyone has the ability to prophesy. And it's not just uh, me. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 31, St. Paul says, you can all prophesy. We can all speak on behalf of God, his love and truth into the world. Just say, you know, just pair off with somebody, take a few minutes together, calling upon the Holy Spirit. Just say, come Holy Spirit. Sit, let the Lord speak into you. When you get a word, Pause and say, God, is this what you want me to say? Pause. And then just deliver it. I can tell you, I've done this. Nobody bats a thousand. I don't bat a thousand. Because sometimes I've said these words to people and they go, oh, thanks. Okay. Sometimes they say, wow, that's exactly what I needed to hear. But it's not about us delivering a sucker punch to the soul. It's about us being faithful and delivering the word that was given to us. So find yourself a partner. Maria's going to play and we're just going to call upon the Holy Spirit and just pray for one another. Say, Lord, give me a prophetic word and just yield. Say, I receive. Help me to receive. We got about another minute or so and 
we'll, we'll time it, wrap up this prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How good and beautiful and amazing would it be if you had this with a brother priest on a regular basis? How necessary and good and, and how much good would it release in our lives if we made this not just, hey, when we come to Steubenville, let's pray with one another, but you would be able to seek out a brother in Christ, a brother priest, a brother deacon, and take time ministering to one another, putting one another in the hands of God and speaking God's truth into one another's hearts. Let me ask a question. How many per person, people got a word from God that really touched their heart deeply? It was, there was, I needed to hear what the person had to say. How many would say like on a scale of one to 10, it was like a seven, between a seven and a 10, like way up there. How many got a message that would say it moved you like a five to a six, but it, it moved you. How many got a word that's like, I, I wasn't really sure if that was for me. I'm going to have to pray about it, process it. I don't know what exactly. Listen, once again, this scale, none of us, even, I love the fact that a professional baseball player can get up to the plate and seven out of ten, ten times fail and make millions of dollars. Our God is much more merciful and patient with us than managers are with their baseball teams and their players. We don't have to get up and hit a home run every time. But you have to get up and swing the bat. That's what matters. Consistently taking a step of faith and swinging that bat with the Lord. The more you swing, the more you exercise the gifts, the more mature you will become with them, the better you will be at hearing and responding to how the Spirit leads. I want to encourage you when you leave here to find a brother, priest, or deacon that you can serve as somebody who will minister God's grace to one another. And I, I wish I had time, you know, we were already almost out of time to go into things like, how do we pray for healing? How do we pray, you know, for, for inner healing? How do we go more deeper into these things that would, you know, that we need to be doing with our, with, that we need to experience and also that we need to be able to bring to people that we minister to? I wish we had a lot more time to get into these things. Um, but what we'll do right now, let's the silence to, to thank God. Ask the Spirit to put one word on your life about what does the Lord want to do next in terms of charisms in your life? Is that word hunger formed? Does He want you to desire them? What does the Spirit want? Just say, thank you, Lord, for how you're moving. What is it that you want? Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you that you are the ocean that we can never get to the complete depths of. We thank you that you're the ocean of love that we could just continue to, 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 to float in, to rest in, to dive deep into, to receive from all the goodness Holy Spirit, continue to wash over us. Continue to move our hearts to deeper receptivity, deeper joy, deeper peace as we rest in your love. Lord, we thank you for the energy and excitement that we feel in our hearts for the ministry that we have been given when your Spirit is at the center. Holy Spirit, we take no confidence in our flesh. We renounce ourselves, our egos, our prides, pride, our dreams, our ambitions. We lay it all at your feet. Holy Spirit, pour the fire of love upon what we want. Purify it. Strengthen it. We want to receive back from you this purified vision for what you want for us. Come, Holy Spirit, continue to lead and guide. And thank you so much for how you've just worked in abundance over these last few days in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Keep us open. Keep us open. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Remember, there, you know, our faith, when you hear the word faith, you can think of faith as the creed. 
You can think of faith as entrusting in God for our salvation. We can think of faith as that fruit of the Holy Spirit that allows us to be faithful to God. But there's also that dimension of faith that Jesus said, is the, that's the stuff that moves mountains. That's the faith that we need right now. Amen? Because the mountains... How, you know, the biggest mountains it seems like we got to overcome are the ones that the church puts in front of us and <laughs> that we have to climb over just to get to people to minister to them. But all these mountains can be moved with God's grace. Um, so, yeah, it, we got to go to eat right now, and I thought we'd be able to have time to have a discussion about how to do bring this back to your family. But here's what I will offer to you as somebody who loves you guys. Like, this is what... These, this, this part of June is my favorite time of the year because there's the Power and Purpose Conference, which is, you know, it was over 800 people. And on Saturday night, we had 1,000 people in our field house praying and, and praising God. And it was powerful, powerful stuff. And then right, just to go from Sunday right into Monday to be with you guys for the last few days, it's like a joy. And uh, if anyone wants to, uh, you know, find out what you can do to bring more of the grace of the Holy Spirit to your parish, you can email me if you want to come and ask me for my email afterwards. I'll be glad to help. A lot of you guys, if you're already a, a pastor and you've got it going on and you, you're like, hey, uh, you know, you, you can come talk to me too. I'll help you. You know, I, I, can, I can guide anyone who wants to bring this grace to your, to, you know, this is what's working for me. You know, so talk to one another. Talk to me if you want to, and, uh, you know, let's just continue to, to know that what happens here and in you is meant to go out from you. We, it, it's the gifts that you receive from the Holy Spirit are for the edification of others. Let that happen. Amen?